thank you so much uh, for coming. Um, Although uh, I'm happy you didn't have to catch the last flight home before the conference actually ends, and you made your effort to come here for the last presentation of Unite. It's, of course, the most interesting topic of this uh, whole conference. Um, <laughs> but anyway, my name is Tomek. Uh, I'm part of the QA team in Copenhagen. I'm based in Copenhagen. Uh, I work as a toolsmith. And I maintain and develop test infrastructure in Unity. But besides that, I also um, work on Unity test tools. And that's what I'm going to present you today. So uh, let me start with a little poem. It goes like that. 99 little bugs in the code. <laughs> 99 little bugs in the code. Take one down, patch it around. 117 bucks in the code. <laughs> I'm not the author of it, and I couldn't find the author, um, but this guy was so right, wasn't he? Like, I think anyone who ever, uh, any programmer out there, run into a problem where, while fixing one thing, he got to break tons of other stuff, and he didn't even realize it until someone told him. Um, so those issues that you introduce while trying to fix other issues are called regressions. And uh, the main purpose of test, automations, of test automation is to find those regressions. Um, in, testing, in test automation, there is this concept of uh, test pyramid. And it looks more or less like that. Uh, as you can see, on the bottom of it, you have uh, low-level tests, um, called also unit tests. On top of them, you have integration tests. And at the top, uh, there are the UI tests. And the pyramid shows, I would say, a healthy distribution of, uh, you, of different kinds of tests you should have in your test suite, and how you should uh, structure them. The base of your test uh, suite should be unit tests. And you should uh, start with those, and then move on to integration tests, which uh, you don't need as many as uh, unit tests. And then you need only a small amount of U UI tests. Um, that's, uh, of course, the perfect situation. Uh, but the reason for that is that going down to the, in the pyramid, you will uh, achieve high scalability. And unit tests are the fastest tests to run. Um, they are the easiest to maintain and the easiest to debug. On the other hand, if you go up in the pyramid, you lose the scalability, although you gain other things like uh, the ease of authoring the test. You don't need the code to be testable uh, as much uh, as you need uh, when you write unit tests. Um, and integration tests are in between. Uh, but it doesn't mean that one test are worse or better than the other tests. They're all uh, as important, and you shouldn't have uh, you shouldn't say that UI tests are completely bad and not write them at all. They have their place, and uh, they're also very useful in some cases, but. The, you shouldn't base your test suits on UI tests. You should rather move towards low-level tests. There's also another thing uh, that is important when you think about test automation, maybe a bit more from the business point of view. And uh, I mean the cost of introducing changes in your code. Now, it raises really quickly in different stages of development. And uh, of course, fixing bugs is introducing changes. So you want to do it as soon as possible in the development cycle, so you can keep the costs as low as possible. So, but <laughs> Unity is uh, mainly used for games, and I guess you guys are mostly game developers. So, uh, how does testing relate? How, uh, how do you test games, like? 
I'll ask you a question. How many of you have uh, heard that you can't really test games? Yeah. It's, um, there are people that really believe in that, and uh, none of them actually have any arguments behind it. Uh, well, they do, but I don't think they're valid. Uh, because I'll try to uh, convince you that uh, that this is uh, not true. <laughs> that you can <laughs> you you can actually test games. Oops. Um, yep. Um, so let, let's try to define what games are. Uh, most of the games nowadays they they have some kinds of graphics. Um, Either it's some basic graphics or super fancy graphics, but it requires it requires a lot of art involved. There's also like stuff like audio, uh, and also many many other stuff, and uh, and it's all driven by code. Uh, and the coding part, it's uh, in in game development, is very prone to changes. It's it's really hard to predict what how your game will look like uh, in the early stages of development. Um, so, it is very likely that you will introduce many, many changes and you will change your code base quite often. Uh, which, of course, can cause uh, you to introduce regressions. And uh, you should defend yourself against regressions with test automation. And the other thing, when we're talking about game-wise, uh, about games, is uh, you can have Mm. Sorry, it's not updating. Hmm. Yes. Also, non-functional requirements can be different uh, from, you can say, regular types of software. Uh, stuff like networking for multiplayer games must be important, low latency, no delays, uh, synchronization. Also, performance must be quite good. Uh, it's a real-time system that has to uh, be on a certain level of FPS. Uh, but in the end, it's, uh, it's just software. It's, it's software like any other software. There's no magic in there. And uh, like as any other software, you can test it in one way or another. Of course, there might be cases uh, like you may um, consider different approaches to the design of your code because performance doesn't really work well with uh, the proper code design, the proper architecture. But it still doesn't mean it's, uh, it's something else than just software. Um, Thomas Peterson, our QA director, said at one of the talks that it's uh, not automation or die. I'm not uh, trying to convince you that it's uh, that the automation will solve all of your problems and it's the ultimate solution for everything, because there is uh, manual tests are as much as important. Um, no uh, machine will ever replace a human, especially in, in discoverability testing. Uh, but humans are expensive, not only uh, when you're talking about salary, but also time. Uh, no human can perform as many tests as a machine. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, other thing is that uh, when you send your builds to the QA, you, uh, you really don't want them to get stuck on regressions and you don't want them to waste their time on uh, stuff that is not really what they should test. That's why you should have uh, your first line of defense uh, with the, your test automations. So in December last year, we released the uh, Unity test tools. Um, and... Uh, the package, it's a package you can get from the asset store. And in the package, you will find uh, three main components. One of them is, the, the first one is a unit test runner. There is an integration test runner that comes with a platform runner. And there is an assertion component. 
And in addition to that, there is a small batch runner. And uh, I will show you uh, each of them in a second. I just want you to uh, see more or less how the tools relate to the test uh, pyramid. Uh, as you can see, we cover the low-level tests, the integration tests, but we don't provide any framework for UI testing. And in addition to that, there is uh, the assertion component, which is um, kind of like semi-automation tool. Great. So uh, let me show you the tools in practice. Can you guys see what's on the screen? Is it OK? OK. So. Um, this is an empty project with the Unity Test Tools package, important in it. Uh, as you can see, the, each component has its own directory. So if you want to use only one component, you can just delete the other ones, uh, just leave the common folder. Uh, you might also want to delete the examples when you import it to your new project. Uh, but let's look at the test runner, the Unity Test Runner. You can open it from the Unity Test Tools menu or use uh, control shift alt u shortcut and it looks like that uh, probably all of you heard about unit tests and probably most of you have uh, have written one in your life so unit testing is not a concept unique for uh, for unity or the unity test tools uh, what we did we just took the a unit library, and we created a, a runner for it. Uh, and this is it. Uh, you, it gives you a list of tests uh, in a similar fashion than any other unit test runner would present them to you. You've, uh, you have them sorted by namespace, uh, and you can run them from here. So let's try to uh, click the Run All button. So. It happened instantly, as you would expect. Those are just some sample tests. They don't really do anything, but they run uh, instantly. Uh, if you look at the code, this is uh, nothing more than you would expect. You have a method with a test attribute, um, which comes from a unit framework. And once you... Uh, mark a method with the test attribute, it will show up on this list automatically after uh, recompilation happens. So if we, for example, remove the attribute, it's the exception test, it disappeared immediately. So when you run the test, you have the area where the exception when the failure message is shown. So you can get uh, a brief overview of what has happened, what has failed. So let's look at the, how the runner is structured. You have the run all tests, run selected tests, and rerun failed tests button. But uh, in addition to that, when you open the options, you can select, you can select the run on recompile option which uh, will run all the tests every time a recompilation happens to save you um, this extra click, which you may find uh, useful while developing the tests. The next option, uh, run tests on a new scene, uh, may be used when you... Okay, so let's... Uh, let me say another thing first. Uh, why would you, why, why we even decided to implement a unit runner inside of the editor? Uh, this is because when you ever try to run uh, code related to Unity uh, that was calling Unity API from outside of the editor context, you would get those uh, errors that uh, it is just not possible. That's why this runner allows you to uh, invoke Unity API, you can instantiate game objects, you can uh, do whatever you want, although it might not be the best way to write unit tests, 
uh, it is possible here. And because it all runs in the editor context, if, context, if you instantiate a game object, it will be simply persisted on the scene. W there is an undo mechanism implemented uh, that will undo all the changes as long as you register them with, in the undo system. But the, the undo may take a while. That's why uh, this option allows you to simply open an empty scene, run all the tests, and reopen the original one back again. So you skip the cleanup uh, process. If we select it now and try to run it, it will, uh, we will get prompt for saving the current scene. Uh, and if we want to avoid that, we can select auto save the scene to automatically save the scene and uh, run the tests. The last option just simply shows you the details on the side if you prefer the horizontal view. Then you have filters that filter the tests by name. Nothing extraordinary here. This filter uh, filter says by the categories, uh, and unit has this attribute for setting up categories. Oh, there is a missing letter, okay. You can select tests from a particular category to be displayed. And you have advanced tests, advanced filtering that uh, allows you to filter out tests with specific results. You may not want to see the test that has succeeded uh, you just may want to focus only on those that have failed. With the unit test runner, we ship an uh, and substitute library. It's a mocking framework, um, slightly modified to be uh, to be to make it possible to run in Unity, and uh, I guess I, I believe the question would come. Uh, later anyway. Uh, it is not possible right now to mock game objects or mono behaviors, but we're doing all we can to allow you and make the workflow as uh, easy as possible. Um, and that would be pretty much it when it goes about the unit test framework. The next thing is the assertion component. Every modern, uh, or actually every, any, at least most of the languages out there have a concept of an assertion. An assertion is uh, a way to set up invariant in your code, and an invariant is uh, a property that you expect never to change. And the assertion component is uh, a component that allows you to set up those assertions in a visual way uh, very easily and uh, quickly. So let's try to let's try to add one to the game object I just created. So when setting up an assertion component, the first thing you want to do is to select uh, a, com a comparer. A comparer is a, a class uh, that defines how two variables should be compared with each other. I'll get uh, into details about the compares later, but uh, let's say we want to compare two float variables. So I'll select the float compare. The next thing you want to do is you want to select the callback where you want the check to happen. Uh, by default, it's happening in the start method, but let's say I want to check uh, the assertion in every update method, in every frame. By the way, this is a multi-select control, uh, so you may want to disable the other callback. The menu we got allows us to skip few frames before the first check and then set if uh, we want to perform the check repeatedly and set the frequency of the repetitions. This is a game object reference. By default, it's uh, set to the game object 
we set the assertion component on, but you can set any game object uh, here just by drag and dropping it. And the, the field below shows you the path to the field you want to compare. Uh, when you click on it, you'll get a list of components and fields inside of those components. Uh, this list is generated dynamically using reflection, and it works with uh, custom scripts as well. Actually, let's try to add a custom script called custom component that has uh, my float field. And when you click on the list now, the component is uh, right there. And let's select it. So this, is, uh, this will get us a value from this field. The next thing we, wanna, we want to set is the type of comparison that is happening. Uh, let's say I want to say that the, my float field is always equal with certain precision because it's uh, a float variable. And uh, here we specify what do you want to compare it against. You can either compare it to another object. You can uh, um, drag and drop a game object and select a path to a field in a similar fashion. Or you can compare it to a constant value. Let's say 3. Well, this kind of makes no sense, but it's a technical example. Or you can compare it to null. So what happens when we run it now? Um, as you can see, nothing happens. And that's what we expect, because we expected that this field will be always equal to 3. But when I change one of those variables, uh, suddenly a lot of uh, errors pop up. And it's because we check this uh, assertion in every frame because we selected the update method here. Uh, I should have checked the error pause to pause the editor when it happens. Um, but that's pretty much it. Once uh, the condition is not met, the, the assertion will fail and notify you by throwing an exception. So let's take a look at the compares. The float compare, the one I just used, as you can, as you can see, the only thing um, you need to do, actually, Compares is something you can write on your own. The only thing you need to do is to inherit from a compare base class and, in, and implement a compare method. You have two types of compares, generic ones and uh, non-generic. And the generic ones will give you a type in the compare field, and non-generic will just give you objects. But you decide how you want the comparison to happen. What you might have noticed is the public fields here. And this is exactly what you, f what you see, uh, what we selected here. Uh, this is exposed automatically. So this, uh, this is a way of uh, allowing you to configure the compare uh, according to your needs. If I, oh, OK. If I add a new field, let's say let's call it my field, and it recompiles. It's automat automatically shown here. <coughs> so the type-specific compares will give you a list of. Uh, fields or, or uh, properties uh, with the exact type of the compare. So we see only fields of, that, are type, that are floats. So it's easier to find the actual field you want to compare. But if, you have, if your compare is uh, non-generic, there is a general compare that uh, uses equals method to compare objects, you won't get a list of 
fields. Instead, you need to type uh, the path from uh, by yourself. And we can say transform.position.y. And there's some validation happening in the background. Or you can also select it from this uh, helper list, but it won't be as, uh, it will only show you the next level of fields. So, the nice thing about the, the assertion compare is that it doesn't require any testability of your code. You can just uh, take your current project and set the assertions on your uh, game objects and just play the game and let it test yourself, itself. Uh, from other things is that uh, when it, the, the assertion component will be uh, excluded in the release builds, uh, so you don't have to worry about uh, extra overhead of the checks uh, when you build your game uh, in release mode. And along with the assertion compare, there, compare there is uh, assertion component, there is a assertion explorer. This is a little tool that is used for listing all the assertions that are attached to game objects on your current scene. It will give you a nice overview of all the assertions you have, because sometimes it, uh, it's easier just to look at the assertions instead of going through every game object in your scene and checking if there's actually an assertion on it or not. So I think I covered the assertions, and uh, we can move on to the integration tests. So as I, uh, as you saw on the test pyramid, integration test runner are uh, for obviously writing integration tests. Uh, you open them from uh, the menu here. And an integration test in this runner is simply a game object. Let's create a new one. And when we look at it, it's simply a game object with a test component attached to it. And anything under that game object in Kerky will be considered uh, a part of the test. So let's create a cube, put it under the test. Let's create another test. Let's call it test two. This one will be test one. And when I switch between those tests, you can notice that all the other tests on the scene are being disabled. And uh, because the test is disabled, all the hierarchy underneath is uh, being disabled, and they, you don't see them on the scene. And this is the way how the test runner runs the test. It disables all of them and then enables them one after another. So what happens when I run the test now? Nothing happens. And the test times out after five seconds. And um, if you remember from unit tests, if you have a simple empty uh, method marked as test and you run it, it will just pass. But it's uh, not as uh, straightforward when, you, when it goes about the integration test, because an integration test has an addition, additional, uh, uh, it needs to run in time as well. And there is no explicit entry and exit point uh, of a test. In case of a unit test, it would be the boundary of the method that is marked as a test. The test starts where the method uh, starts, and it ends when the method ends. But in this case, you need to uh, explicitly tell the runner that your test has passed. 
And there are multiple ways of doing that. Uh, the most basic way would be to call a static method from integration test class. Uh, it would call either pass or fail method. And that would tell the runner that the test has either passed or failed. But you don't need to do it from code. We have uh, a component that can do it for you. It's called call testing, and it will simply just call the pass or fail method in the callback you set here. So let's see what happens when I run it now. The test has passed immediately because we uh, told him to. Actually, this component did. So let's look what are the options in the component. The first thing is the name, and uh, it's followed by a include platform multi checkbox where you can exclude platforms you don't want your tests to run on because you can actually run them on platforms. Uh, but I'll get back to that uh, in a little while. The next thing is a timeout. Uh, we can set it to be a bit lower. You can ignore the test. And uh, next option allows you to use integration, use uh, assertions, the assertion component, to drive your tests. When you check this checkbox, the runner will check for assertions, all the assertions that are uh, set on game objects under this specific test. And uh, it will succeed automatically once every assertion has been uh, executed at least once. Of course, if an assertion fails because an exception is thrown, an exception will uh, cause the test to fail. Unless you check the ex expect exception checkbox, uh, which will make the test not fail uh, when an exception happens, either all of them, or you can specify uh, certain types of exceptions. Or you can even drive your test by exceptions uh, by selecting this last checkbox, succeed when exception happens. So you don't need to wrap it in your code and uh, call the integration test.pass method. The integration test runner allows you to group your tests as well, simply just uh, by dragging it, uh, creating a hierarchy out of them. It will also be uh, visible in the integration test runner. Uh, it has the details uh, down here. And uh, the layout of the runner is very similar to the unit test runner. It has the run all, run selected, and uh, create a new test button. In the options, you can uh, you have two options. The first one will simply uh, create a new game object uh, under the currently selected test. Uh, so you don't have to grab it and uh, place it under the test every time. The second option will block the UI. Uh, so we don't accidentally click and interfere with the scene. If we uncheck it, uh, the dialog will not pop, pop out, but you may accidentally uh, click and interfere with the scene. So let me show you the, one of the examples that comes with the package. It's, uh, It's uh, example tests for our beloved Angry Bots. They weren't actually tested, but we simply took the assets from the Angry Bots project and we uh, created a simple suit for them. The, there are three tests. Uh, two of them test if the player is inside or outside of the 
visibility range of the spider bot, and it validates that the, the bot wakes up or don't accordingly. And one of them validates if uh, the player gets damage when the uh, robot explodes. So le let's try to uh, run them. Um, we took the assets, we slightly modified them uh, to uh, decouple them for them and uh, make the package size smaller, but it's pretty much the prefabs that are used in the angry bots. So uh, you don't need, uh, you might need slight, uh, a little bit of testability uh, of your code, but it's uh, also working on a pretty high level and you can probably use it out of the box uh, for your project, well, for your current projects now. So once, uh, once you create your test suits, uh, you can run them in the editor, but uh, an obvious thing to do would be to run them on your platform you're developing for. And for that, there's the platform runner. It gives you a list of tests, uh, of scenes with tests uh, that you can select, and you can select the target platform you want to run them on, and simply click uh, Build and Run Tests. And it will automatically build the scene and uh, invoke the player. And it's the same test happening, but in a uh, standalone player. And at the end, uh, when everything wor uh, works as expected, you will get this beautiful green message. Uh, in case of there are any failures, uh, you will get a report with the uh, errors that happened during the run. Actually, maybe I can show you other example. This is another um, example scene, um, and it looks like that. Uh, but so once you create all your test suits, uh, you don't really want to run them uh, yourself every time uh, and look at the test report if it's uh, green or not. Uh, and for that, we provide you a batch uh, test runner, which allows you to run all the tests, uh, both unit tests and integration tests from a command line. And uh, in addition to that, it will get the results back and save them as a XML file uh, in an unit uh, format, which uh, you can simply parse and check for uh, the results. So let's try to run them. I have this uh, simple script that invokes Unity uh, in batch mode. You need to pass the path to the project, and you need to point uh, to this method, Unity test .batch run integration tests, or run unit tests. You can set the output path and the uh, target platform you're, you want to run the tests on. And the start uh, slash wait is uh, used for waiting for the process to finish. So we can also get the return code from the platform. So the, the little window here. This is uh, a result receiver that is listening uh, on a port because the communication happens over uh, TCP protocol. So you can run those tests on uh, devices like Android uh, that are not, uh, well, the run is not hosted on the same machine and uh, otherwise you would need to manually uh, check the, I don't know, save the re results on the device and get them somehow, but in this case you just need to uh, 
have the device uh, in the same network. So the results were generated here. Uh, we can take a look at them. It's an unit format, and I believe any CI system, a continuous integration system out there has a plugin for parsing uh, an unit uh, XMLs. So it uh, should be very easy to uh, just integrate it with your CI systems. So we went through the platform runner, batch runner. Yes, and the, the package is available on the asset store. You can just simply grab it from there. It's free. Uh, two days ago, we started to host the tools on Bitbucket as well as, uh, as the first project uh, from Unity Open Source Initiative. So you are very welcome to uh, fork it and uh, send us pull requests. Um, we are very happy to listen to your feedback, uh, your comments, because we primarily make those tools for you. If you have any suggestions, uh, please contact us uh, through the forums or Bitbucket or um, Twitter, maybe. Uh, a lot of people ask us uh, about the cloud build since it got announced uh, as well during this Unite. Uh, it, it doesn't allow uh, to run the tests, the, the beta version, but it's something we got really excited about as well, and I will probably spend my, uh, the nearest future in trying to make the tools work on the cloud build because this is just what you want to do. Uh, and I think it's a really awesome feature. It would be a really awesome feature on the cloud build platform. And uh, that would be it from my side. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I guess we can do a little Q&A session. Sure. Thank you very much. Uh, and I, I was requested that you could kindly go to the mic uh, with questions because it's being recorded. Can you hear me? Yes. OK. Uh, I had a few quick questions. Sure. Um, does the Assertion Explorer show you assertions only in the scene you're viewing yes. at the moment? OK. Um, other question, uh, if I'm going to write a new comparer, uh, should I also write a new editor inspector script for it? Is there a way to do that? Do you need a custom um, inspector for it? Uh, or is there a way to write one? Uh, is there like a class that I could? I could uh, no, the, all the public fields will be exposed, and um, there is no way to implement it in a nice way. But I, uh, I think just exposing public fields should be sufficient for most of the cases. OK, thanks. You're welcome. Hey. Hi. Um, so if we have our own uh, build, process rather than the standard Unity just build and run, um, can that be hooked into the, the batch mode and the rest of the standalone? Uh, yes, I believe you can just simply call the same method and it should, uh, yes, there is a public method where you can pass the target platform and it will just work hopefully. Perfect. Any other questions? Then thank you very much for coming and uh, have a safe trip home.